Good morning, Calvary, or afternoon or evening. I guess I don't really know when you're going to be watching this, but welcome to Holy Week. It's Monday. Um, this video is simply meant for a way to us to for us to connect a little bit, and I'm just going to walk you through what I gleaned from the passages of today in hopes that it helps you somehow. So if you haven't read it yet, pause the video and go read it. It's Luke 20, verses 1 to 26. So pause the video if you haven't read it yet. So now I'm assuming everyone's back and has read the scripture. Um, it's kind of three sections, and, I, and the two that really stood out to me, I'm going to live in the last part of it, but I'm just going to highlight the first part that kind of stood out to me, is at this point, um, religious leaders were getting a little frustrated with Jesus because he was doing things the way that they weren't comfortable with, they hadn't done things before, and they were getting questioned a lot and realizing that Jesus cared more about their hearts than about what they were doing. Um, and so they were trying to get him into trouble to get rid of him so that they could kind of go back to the way things were. were. They were comfortable and they liked them and they were in control and weren't being questioned. Um, and so that first part kind of highlighted that for me again. And then the last part, it talks about um, who should we pay taxes to. It says a couple of spies were sent to try and trip Jesus up and again, get him in trouble for saying something. And it's this beautiful exchange between him and these people who are trying to trip him up. Um, they basically say, who should we pay taxes to? Um, and in the Passion Translation, Jesus says, the coin bears the image of the Emperor Caesar, and you should give back to Caesar all that belongs to him. And then he takes that opportunity to say, but you bear the image of God, so give back to God all that belongs to him. And that stood out to me in the passage translation, because then it goes on to, and they were astonished by his answer and they became silent. I often wonder about those characters who we never hear about again, but have these powerful exchanges. I wonder what happened to them. Did they, were they flustered and they just left and went back? Or I feel like when they became silent, it was probably a moment where he spoke to their hearts. And it was a moment where they went, oh, he sees right into my heart. I'm made in the image of God. It must have been a life-changing moment. I'd, li I'd like to think that it was. Um, but the truth in this story is that there are pieces of God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit that we just can't understand. We can get stuck and tripped up in the whys and the hows and try and understand. But in the end, Jesus says, look at what you know. Look in the mirror. Think about yourself. Think about your heart. He says, you bear the image of God. And so you are his. Come to him. Follow him. Bring back to him what is already his. Jesus knows those spies. He looks at us and he knows us. He sees us. We can't play games with him. We can't hide. And that's not to scare us because he says in John 12, um, verse 47, it says he did not, Jesus did not come to judge, but to save. He did not come to point out all the ways in which our hearts don't line up with our heads or vice versa. He came to bring us back to God. He simply says, give back to God what is his. So that's kind of what stood out to me today, that I am made in the image of God. I belong to God. God is for me. He doesn't come to judge me but he works to save me. He sent his son to do that, to bring me close to him. So may we declare that today, pray into that today, chew on that today. And uh, yeah, I would encourage you as you start your Holy Week to do something fun to make that a declaration at some point today. There will be a, that declaration will be written somewhere in this piece that is going out. So take that out and and use that today, pray into that today. See you later. Bye.